Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll cover the rapid prototyping of a microfluidic chip with two thin films of PET plastic and an inner layer of double-sided adhesive tape. We'll start by defining our chip design. Here I'm using a stand-in with two inlets and three outlets. You'll notice that there are two um, sketches here. They're both equal in size, the first of which we'll use to define our channel. Uh, the, space with which, the space in which fluid will flow through, and then the second one will define our inlets, our outlets, and the boundaries of our chip. I've mocked these up in Fusion 360, uh, but you're free to use your favorite CAD package. This can be accomplished just as easily in ComSol. Our next step will be to save these files, um, or to export these files as images. In Fusion 360, this is done with a drawing exchange, or DXF file. I'll save the first one, defining our channel, and then do the same for our inlets and outlets. Once we've done that, we can open the Cricut Design Space and start a new project. We'll click on Upload Image, and then in two steps, upload our channels and our through holes. Next, we can select these and insert them into our project space. There are several options at the top. One of the most important is the sizing. Here we'll define the width of the chip to be half an inch, which scales to 1.5 inches lengthwise. Next, we'll select the channel here. Click Attach to make sure that all of the cuts are done on top of one another, and then make it. At this point, you can define where that chip is relative to the um, Cricut backing mat. Here I'll place it um, 8 inches along the x-axis and 1 inch along the y-axis before hitting continue. At this point, you'll connect your material, connect uh, to the Cricut. Um, and when making the, ch the cuts for the channels, we'll select vinyl. The goal here is to thinly score the double-sided tape uh, so that it can be peeled off later. Now we'll load the material into the Cricut and press go. Here are those last few steps shown in real life. Once the Cricut has finished making its cuts, we'll reconnect, click Finish, remove the first sketch from our workspace, and then upload the one with the through holes. We'll define the size just as before as half an inch uh, in width, and ensure that it's rotated appropriately. Select this, click Attach to make sure that all the cuts are made on top of one another, and then click Make It. Once again, here's what those steps look like in real life. Once the Cricut has finished making its cuts, remove the material and the backing board from the machine, turn the Cricut off, close the shell, and close out of the Cricut workspace before moving on to post-processing. The first step in post-processing is to remove the substrate from the backing. Your chip should then be able to 
pull apart really easily before moving on to the next step where with a pair of tweezers or some other fine instrument you'll carefully remove the tape lining the channel and punch out the inlet and outlet holes to your microfluidic chip. Then, adhesive side down, place your chip onto another PET film and press tightly to ensure a solid fit. As a quality control, here I applied about 10 microliters of blue dye to the chip, looking for any issues with seal or obstruction along the channel. This video is shown in real time, and as you can see, there was no evidence of either failure mode. This concludes this video of rapid prototyping of a microfluidic chip. Thank you.